Today I'm going to show you why heart rate monitors are probably not the best tool to measure your workout intensity during CrossFit style workouts or when you are doing functional movements. If you are riding the red line during a workout, your performance is sometimes limited by the heart and the lungs, but also sometimes by local muscular fatigue. In this video, I will do a small experiment where you will learn the difference between local muscular fatigue and systemic fatigue, and also which methods are best to monitor those. It's time to find out your limitations and improve all your workouts. <laughs> Alright, so what am I going to do? I'm going to do three exercise modalities. First, basic run. Then, burpee box jump overs, and then also lunges. Each time, I will move six minutes continuously. All right. What I'm going to do, I'm always going to aim to go for a heart rate of 160 to 165, which I know is my, let's say, red line, my threshold. And now I want to measure not only the heart rate, but also the muscle oxygenation within each modality, as well as lactate. So using this data, I'm going to be able to show you that even though the heart rate will be the same, at least that's what I want to achieve with this experiment, muscle oxygenation and lactate will be vastly different between those three modalities. All right, so now all the baseline testing is done. I strapped on my nurse device on my right thigh as well as my left triceps. Heart rate monitor is strapped, lactate is measured. Let's go for a run. All right, that worked. Heart rate 165 all the time. Some good running. Let's take some lactate. So let's take a little bit of blood, a little pinch. That's perfect. Like this. Then we take a strip, assess a little bit of blood. And this we will do, as I said before, as well as after each segment. If you're at your threshold, lactate should stay similar. So always, let's say, six to seven after each segment. But I think it will be different because of the modality. Here you can really see that I have to slow down to keep my heart rate in check if I would increase my pace of burpees I would check my heart rate even more so I was riding the line at 168 here all the time and uh, yeah I needed to decrease my burpee pace at the end all right so that goes to show how easy it is to jack up your heart rate by just doing some burpees and putting a little bit of wood logs in your garden all right yeah that was hard one more lunges with a stone on my back let's go All right, you can see here that I can keep a nice, easy pace. I don't really have to decelerate or accelerate too much to keep my heart rate at 168. Uh, actually, a nice way to keep your heart rate nice and smooth, but let's see what it actually does with my local muscle oxygenation as well as my lactate. Okay, let's have a look. Good, that was actually a lot of fun. So let us look at the data. First, I'll show you the heart rate, then the muscle oxygenation measured via nurse, and then also lactate, which I measured via the earlobe. So I actually achieved what I wanted to achieve, always an increase in heart rate until 165 to 167 during my movements, first the run, then the burpees, then the lunges. Obviously it went down during the recovery, three to four minutes recovery, and then it went up again during my second and my third movement, always hitting that threshold pace for me at 165 to 167 heart rate. So that's something we can use, but obviously the interesting part here is what happens inside my muscle. So I measure with heart rate the systemic effect, how fast the heart is 
pumping blood into the tissue. But what I want to know is a fine balance between oxygen uptake and oxygen delivery. That is obviously much more interesting. And you can see here, there's vast differences between the different modalities I did. Even though my heart rate, remember, was always 165. So you see here, during my run, it goes down initially and then it actually tends up all the time towards the, the end where it's almost back to baseline. This means that my heart is able to pump enough blood into my tissue and that actually supersedes the amount of oxygen that I'm using during the run. Secondly, when I'm doing the burpees, I felt immediately that I had to throttle down. So I started off slightly too fast, my heart rate went up too much, and then I had to throttle down. You sometimes also have this during normal workouts. And you see beautifully that the muscle oxygenation goes down, but also stays flat. Again, my heart rate was the same as during the run. And then I had some recovery, obviously it jumps up, and then I go again with the lunges, and obviously lunges is really uh, quad dominant, so I'm using a lot of oxygen during my uh, steps, and you see here that the oxygenation goes down even more than during the burpees and stays uh, nicely flat throughout the whole time. So this means that I was in both movements, both the, the lunges as well as the burpees, I was riding the red line. And this I means that my heart was able to deliver the right amount of oxygen that my muscles needed. If I would have gone a little bit higher in pace with both the burpees as well as the lunges, I might have gone over the red line and actually had to decrease substantially because my muscle oxygenation would go down drastically. This is also what you can see in lactate. Lactate I measured uh, first before, so just right, almost right after the, the warm-up, and then always after each segment. And you can see it doesn't really say too much in this case, the lactate. First, it was not so easy to measure. It's an invasive measurement. And second, it went up to 4.7, then it went down probably, and then after the burpee box jump, it went to 5.8. And then the lunges, even though I didn't feel super exhausted, it even went up to 8.9. So if you're a coach or an athlete, this doesn't really say too much. It just says, okay, you're probably around your threshold, uh, maybe slightly going uh, over your threshold, because in here you can see that there's an increase from 5.8 to 8.9. Good, but in my opinion, this is not entirely correct because if you look at the muscle oxygenation data, you see that I'm actually just on my threshold. The muscle oxygenation doesn't go down much more. So that's why a heart rate monitor, as well as to a lesser extent uh, lactate measurement, are not that useful during CrossFit workouts or when you are doing functional fitness movements. Something like a muscle oxygenation measurement is much more interesting because there you can really see the fine balance at the local muscle level between the oxygen delivery as well as oxygen utilization. All right, that was it from my part. I hope you like this content. If you do, just give it a quick subscribe and a like. It really helps out the channel. Only takes one second of your time. If you want to know more how to assess and test lactate thresholds, I did a video on this with an elite CrossFit athlete that you don't want to miss. Check here.